What's up, everyone? This is David, a.k.a. Reverse Long, and today I'm here with Lucas Marin from... Uh, the, I, so I, I did a podcast with Lucas about a few months ago, and uh, Lucas trades with me and my little group of people in free market and regular hours, and I've seen Lucas progress for a long time now. Um, since the Tim Sykes Challenge, I, uh, we, we both started in the Tim Sykes Challenge, and we're active in there too every now and then. Lucas is more active than I am. But uh, Lucas was trading pre-market way early in the morning, like I was for a long time. And I still am, you know, for the most part. Um, recently, I haven't because I, I've been, I got my own stuff going on that I'm moving and stuff like that and traveling. But uh, when Lucas is a active really early in the morning, he's able to, he's able to grow his accounts and, and uh, use a high odds uh, strategy in the pre-market to stack his accounts and I've seen him progress. And then now he's like transitioning to full-time trading. And if you look at the podcast we did before, um, Lucas talks about his background in, in, in uh, finance and things like that. And it's just interesting to see like, you know, how that background actually was able to, I think it, it's, it's, it's helped him somewhat as well as his whole journey so far. And then now he's even starting like a, uh, like a community and, and education in Brazil about the US trading the US markets, which is really cool. Um, we're going to talk about that. But yeah, what's up, Lucas? How's it going? Hey, David. Thank you again, man, for having me here. It's a pleasure again. And I'm really ha happy to, to, to like bring again like new, a new version of me because like five months, four months that, that has passed and everything changed. Like I'm a new, like it's a lot of knowledge going through the trades and screen time. And like now I'm more confident and like, uh, and I'm in a monthly basis, I'm like having three times the profit that I had like four months before. Like that's crazy for me. And it's, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. That's the main Gotcha. So, so yeah. So you were able to uh, to to off to go off of that. So like you're able now you're taking bigger sizes with this with similar strategy, and you're still like snowballing the you know your trading. It's just it's the same stuff, just repetitive over and over, and it's gradually increasing the size and like and going like that. Is that what you're saying? So now you're starting to see like bigger gains and now it's it's uh you're moving at a faster pace but because of all the groundwork that you started early on and uh, you built up is that i'm getting the gist of that that's more or less yeah that that's that's exactly it i'm still like i'm 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 not at the best that i could like i still i still think i need to improve a lot in sizing i'm still like afraid to, to increase more size than I could because now, now I have a really, I have a nice uh, account size, but I'm still like increasing 50, 30% more than I was like three months ago. But what changed it, it's like my average gains changed uh, my percentage winning trades changed it. And uh, also like I'm starting to, to have some long trades in the subpenny world and uh and that uh -huh. help that that is helping a lot yeah. too but yeah i'm interested okay so so you okay so being in brazil you didn't have to deal with the pdt right i did i you did. did you did i so. did so that's why like in 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 brazil in my community uh i'm only uh i'm telling everybody here that like it's they are, they're going to be a part of this community to, to trade in trade zero because that's the only one who, who doesn't have PDT rule. And uh, <laughs> uh, what happened is like me, uh, I started with interactive brokers and uh, I started below PDT and I, I started growing up, like grinding up the account. Play, like 2021, I was trading mostly OTCs deep buys. And from August now, I from since since August last year, uh, I had uh, I've been charting, and since November, like I'm I've been trading pre market and after hours. And now that I'm a full time trader, uh, I'm uh, I'm trading regular hours too. That's cool. So 
So you you started with uh, the IB and trade zero. I started with only IB. Right? Only IB. Uh huh. Yeah, and uh, now that I'm I'm having a lot of students and and like people, not students, but like people who who actually are trained uh, together and trying to learn. Since they only can use trade zero because they they have like small accounts, I've, I've opened the account on trade zero to learn how to trade small in that uh, ecosystem. Yeah. To be able to to teach them, and uh, that's why I have two accounts. And now we are discussing a lot about like, come on, man, you need to start uh, upgrading your broker to another broker, right? And that that's a, that's a subject that I want to discuss, man. Yeah. Because... So, so, but check this out. Like, you know, what I and I remember being under PDT with interactive brokers only, and you see all these successful traders in the challenge. They are millionaire traders, whatever. And that's great. You're learning from them. You're learning the webinars. You're doing all that. But like, you don't. You still don't have a model of someone to to uh, go by that started with the under PDT and to grow it to over PDT and to. So it's hard. So like, you you almost need someone that's not like a super millionaire trader because they will never they will never trade under PDT. So they forgot about it. You know. Yeah, <laughs> so you, you you need someone in the middle that still is fresh uh, and has. Can can guide that you know um, that can remember being under PDT and being or or be, having to open up another broker, you know. There's just like no model for that. So that when I see, like uh, for example, though you've done it successfully, and I see now Sam Sam Putnam, which you know he's close to us as well. He the way he's doing it when when he succeeds, and he will, you know, he he, he will. he's he's gonna sure. succeed. Yeah, he's been at this for a few years. He's doing everything the right way. And like, I've seen it, his improvement is, is great and he, great risk management. So like, he's going to succeed. But the way he's going about it, when he does succeed, he's going to be the one that like everyone should, under. if you're under PDT, you should go like him. You open up multiple, but he's in the US. You open up multiple under PDT accounts and you, you know, you know how that works. So the way he's doing it. But the way you're doing it, is is for like the Brazilians, they can go to trade zero. They can, they don't have to be under PDT and there's a way to manage it. You, so you need someone to guide you because the locate fees on trade zero are kind of tricky. You don't want to hold overnight over there. You're going to yeah. get screwed. Uh, so there's a lot of nuances that you need to know, or you need someone to guide you with. So like, you know, um, and you always need one person to to lead the way with that, you know? So like, like for example, for me, with uh, shorting, once you know, 2016. I don't. I forgot when you started the challenge, but 2021. 2021. Okay, so like, but when when I started, the only person that had under PDT or had a small amount of money that succeeded was Tim Grittani. I was like, oh my god, one guy did it. I can do it. You always okay. need that one guy, you know. So, so yeah. So so you're the Brazilian guy. So like uh so. All right. So um, now and then also you're doing these sub penny plays, too, which is going I think you're going long like you're holding them for a long like a, a long like you have a fundamental analysis on it. Or how do you go by that? Because I know you also have and we can talk about that in a second, like your financial background. So you're able to understand uh, some other things going on with the companies. And that's how you choose uh, the lower price plays. That well, the, the 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 super plays are are the plays uh, re related to the Nasdaq rule, right? The Ali is talking about, and that's the main play that I, that I that I'm doing right now. Uh, we have, of course, a lot of plays regarding the the lockup experience and uh, uh, warrants and stuff. But that's the main play, and th that's a really good point. Like, why do I do the sub penny plays? We, we, we usually, like, we, Ar Arsalan was talking about it. That's the, we, when we play penny stocks, we are talking about um, uh, asymmetric risk. I think that's the word in English, right? When you have uh, a risk that is, it doesn't have the same uh, symmetry regarding, like, when you buy a, a 10 cent stock, you're probably like you really have a really good uh, re uh let, let me confirm that there is that the word right i think it has a, 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 a symmetric risk i know arsenal yeah, is a much smarter true. guy than us so like uh, <laughs> yeah. 
So Arsalan is the, we're all on Kimfo, by the way. Whoever's listening, this is Lucas Marin Trader. He's referring right. to Arsalan. Arsalan is also on Kimfo. Um, and yeah, just so, some of the names that we, we all have a chat and we chatting with each other sometimes as we trade. So like um we have these discussions. So as asymmetric risk. So, so the risk is not the same. Is that what you're saying? Like one yeah, what I mean, it's like when you buy a 10 stock, 10 cent stock. Yeah. You're, you're 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 way way uh oversold the stock is way 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 oversold so like regarding the risk it's the the risk is here it's higher for them to spike and yeah. like get a squeeze than then to go like to zero zero five cents that's the, the main point right yeah and what what lucas is referring to so he's also in ali's chat ali angels and um what they go over, from what I understand, uh, if it go, like you're saying, to go below 10 cents, they have a threat of going to the OTCs. And when a company is like putting, if you look at their filings, as always, as the alley teaches, you can see if they, they're all doing shareholder meetings, they're doing votes, they're being like active to be like to to survive, rather than just like giving up and you know and and dying, you know, so. If if they're being active and want to survive, they don't want to get delisted because it's a lot of work to get uplisted to the to a, yeah, exactly. the listed exchange. So when you have a stock at ten cents and they want to stay alive, and you see all this active all this activity going on the uh, uh in the in the company, it's like it's very low risk. There's always yeah, exactly. risk, but it's very very low risk. That yeah, but like that that's that's actually that's uh, a role play not exactly a fundamental play like when we talk about fundamental play we are talking we 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 like me and you we trade the same way like we check words we check float we check sometimes i i i check like revenues because like there's some movements that doesn't make any sense like like i i said that example the last podcast because there's an example for me that's it's perfect like a company with a hundred million re annual revenue has done a contract with another company with five million revenue for this contract. Come on, the stock is going like fifty percent up, and like it's increasing five percent in the the annual revenue. It doesn't make any sense. So these types of tweets, like the these little nuances, that that that's why we like we we that's what we trade right that's that's what we check like we check all this inefficiency because that's why penny stocks are so beautiful because they are they have a lot of inefficiency and that's that's what we trade like which we, we we trade over value stocks when we yeah. short that's the main point absolutely we we can um we trade the noise around the inefficiency and that's we just take the profit from that that's that's the goal you know so absolutely um so with that so so lucas you maybe want to give a, a a background on yourself too for the because there's been a lot there's a lot of new subscribers and stuff since the last right. podcast so maybe a little background on yourself and how you got started and stuff perfect i have 14 years already 15 years of market now uh, i started trading like long time ago uh futures in brazil i i only i've been only trading u.s market the last three years now so all i'm gonna talk about it's brazilian markets before that and so i started trading in brazilian futures and then my first job was at credit swiss so i started already at the brokerage house tree uh, i started as a middle office and like it's crazy like in brazil man uh when you're an intern working at the the, the, the the trading desk you your your job is in the lunch you 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 grab all the the the, the food uh <laughs> from everybody like man what, what do you want to eat that for the trader you know and I, I ask all the food like i i i i think the word is asked like i ask for them all the, their food so i need to get there like below the, in the building, get the food, pay the food and bring the food for the trader. Now, that's crazy, right? But that's how like the, the trading world, uh, institutional trading world works. So I started as an intern in the middle office and then I, I, I was responsible for 
uh, connecting companies with Credit Suisse for market making services. That's crazy, man. So I like there's an IPO for a company that, that Credit Suisse did. So I was the one re, uh, regarding, uh, I was the one that managed, managed the relationship between the broker and the company and the IR of the company regarding market makers. Like we were the market makers for the company. That's all about like the same thing that we, you have in US. Like we have green shoe, we have all the, 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 the stuff that the underwriter needs to, to do for to maintain the stock during the IPO. And after the, usually the same underwriter is the, the same guy who, uh, who does the market making in Brazil. It's not like in US that, we, that you have a lot of market makers. Usually it's one or two only in Brazil for each stock. Uh, and then I started like growing the company and I became like a head of the stock low and desk, which is exactly what we do. We borrow stock from the stock low and desk. And uh, I, I used to work there. Like I was the guy who managed all the, the swap book in Credit Suisse. Because for example, what do you, there's a lot of ways for a foreign client to trade in Brazil. One of them is they train through a swap desk. So it, they do a swap. Not sure everybody knows what, what a swap is, but it's a financial ter, fin, financial transaction uh, with two different types of uh, in financial instruments that they hedge each other, and in a way they they provide like financial exposure for the market. So uh, press, that's the main way that uh, institutional clients trade in Brazil. They don't need to open an account; they only trade for the swap. Uh, the swap entity for Credit Suisse. That's the way that they trade. And uh, that's why I had a, a lot of, I, have a, I had a huge portfolio of stocks to land in the market because since all the, the, the foreign clients were buying stock in that, in that instrument, uh, we were there, there was only one uh, account that were buying all the stocks and they split it for all the foreign clients, you know? So then that they had a lot of stocks to be landed to. So that's why I well, that's what I did. And after that, I, I changed it to the stock trading desk. Like so I was an equity trader for uh foreign clients, all institutional clients. And that's like that helps me, helped me a lot still today. Because when I see level two, when I see the fundamentals, uh like guy, man, nobody there cares about financial ads, uh technical analysis. Nobody in the institutional world talks about uh, uh, technical analysis. It's only about flow, stock flow. So if they have a lot of stocks to sell, they're going to push, they're going to bring the stock down. If they have a lot of stocks to buy, they're going to like bring the stock up. And that's how they work. The, 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 the institutional world works. I played for a lot of hedge funds. Man, I trade for like me, Wellington, for all, all, all of these huge uh, investment assets, uh, investment funds that has they, they have in the US. So that's what I did, like in Grad Suisse. And that's, what, that's my main background. So I didn't trade to make money. I trade to execute orders for clients. That's different. Like I didn't have a, a, a bias to make money, only to have the better execution for the client. And that, that's like what I did for five years. And after that, I, I, I was out. And then I started a, a, a e-commerce company for five years, like crazy, crazy stuff. And then I started trading again. That, that's my passion, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like, when I see all your podcasts and, and, and when you talk about like the, the hustle to be a really good trader, that like I connect a lot with it because you, to be good, to really succeed in this market, you need to be passionate about it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. I'm glad that you like it. I'm sure that that's one of the reasons, one of the cool things about the podcast is like, you know, you put the stuff out there about like, you know, all the stuff that you're doing and people, they like it, you know, and it's like, and it, it's cool and you make friends and stuff. Awesome. Um, So you mentioned right now uh, about, okay, the Trading for the institution, it's all about order flow and like, you know, so when you said that, um, you, now with small caps, you can see them being like manipulated kind of like for, for their own agenda to get it higher, to get it lower for, 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 for them to, for the person who, whoever's behind it to make profit. 
is it kind of like like that so like the s- small caps are being like um in a way like control like the institution would be in the small caps you don't need an institution you just need one one big trader you know could, yeah. could be like an institution is it something yeah, and that's like the main difference between the markets the brazilian market and the u.s markets and that's like what make me change everything and only focus in us because in Brazil, we only have 500 stocks, man. Here in in you in, in, no, in Brazil, we only have 500 stocks. In US, there's more than 15,000, I guess. And uh, there's no there's no retail trading. There's no mobile trading in Brazil. There's no like penny stocks. There's like 10 penny stocks in Brazil, and nobody traded traded like the 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 the, the liquidity is it's really low, and there's no, ah, there's okay. no, there's not, this niche doesn't have in Brazil. That's the main uh-huh. point. And that's uh-huh. why I'm trying to bring them this, like to, for the Brazilians, because nobody knows that this is exists. Mm. Nobody so knows. It's to so the US markets, they're the most liquid markets. So you can trade them and uh, you can understand the patterns. Yeah. So when, when you're talking to the, to Brazilians uh, about this stuff, are they, because like, for example, I was just in Argentina few weeks ago a couple weeks ago two weeks ago yeah. and um i was i had my laptop i was trading in the morning in a in a in a co-working place and um somebody came up and said oh is that crypto is that options <laughs> you know so and i don't think they understand what if i were to if i were to explain it i didn't explain it but like to that person but uh to explain like small caps short selling and it's liquid and but but I think with crypto, people are starting to be a little more aware that like trading can be done, you know. Um, are, to Brazilians, are they assuming when you when you do it that that it's crypto or something or? You know how crazy it is. Like we have more people trading crypto here in Brazil than stocks. That's crazy, man. Because we don't have a we don't we have a really small financial market in Brazil. So when, when everybody who's day trading in Brazil, they are at the, the, the index futures and the dollar future, because that's where it's more liquidity to trade. But of course, there's a lot of leverage. There's a lot of leverage and there's a lot of manipulation, but not manipulation, the type of manipulation that we have in penny stocks, because penny stocks are predictable. The manipulation is predictable. The, the manipulation with that I say, it's not my manipulation at all, actually, in, in Brazil, which like when you trade SPY, when you trade uh, index future in Brazil, whatever, there's a lot of HFTs. There's a lot of algorithms trading and making arbitrages, which is actually create, creating efficiency. Yeah. So we don't have this type of like 100% up, 200% up. We don't have short yeah. squeezes. We, like like have, today. I, I believe. NRBO. I, I believe we don't have short squeezes in, in SPY, for example. Uh-huh. Uh, pr- pr- probably th- there's not because there's a lot of efficiency in the market. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, and that's that's the that, that's what makes me like go towards penny stocks because this inefficiency is where we can make money in the long run. In the long run, the institutional players are going to win against the retail traders in the futures. But like what we do, there's not a lot of institutionals. One stock and another, like Nerve, though we were, we, we are both short, I guess. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still. And like this, this type of stuff when there's a 0.72 uh, buying the stock, but like it's one case or another. The main, uh, the main trades that we do, there's not there's only noise that's exactly what you said and there's this this type of training there's not in brazil at all so that's why like i'm trying to open the eyes for the brazilian people because they don't see training as a possible way of living they don't see it because it's hard to make money trading day trading in brazil i'm not saying that it's easy to day trade in us but you have higher odds. You have higher. What? A, it's a, that's another thing that I'm, that I'm I'm trying to uh, to teach them. It's like when we trade futures, for example. When, when you trade spy, 
you're trading a basket of stocks, right? You're not trading one stock. You're trading a basket, basket of stocks, a lot of stocks. So what is the what what makes you think that just because the the support uh, the resistance was was broken up, it's gonna make the stock the 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 spy goes up. What I mean is when we trade penny stocks, we are uniting two things. We are uniting technical analysis with fundamentals. And that's gold, man. That's why that's like when we when today, I think every day when we trade, like for example, today the NRBO, we knew why the stock was up. We knew that the end, yeah. we knew the end game, right? We knew yeah. the end game. We, yeah. we the, our job is how to position yourself with the with sizing that, that we were talking about today. That sizing is the main yeah. game where we trade, uh, especially low floats, size and also resistance. So the 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 where you're gonna place your your order, but you know the end game. Yeah. And that's not how it works in SPY. How do you know if it's going to up or down? Tell me, fundamentally speaking, of course, today the, 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 the SPY went 5% down because of a new, uh, fundamental new, news. But in a day-to-day -day, day -day basis, what's going to make, make the SPY goes up or down? It's hard to predict. It's hard to know if you're on the right side of the trade. We know we are on the right side of the that, trade, that but is, we, maybe, we are, maybe we are too soon, right? <laughs> that, that is a great point. Um, yeah, so so with the spy today dropped, or no, I know the Nasdaq, the QQQ has dropped like four point five percent because of the CPI. Is that what happened? That's fundamental. Yeah, I think it's the CPI. Yeah, and it you know it went down, and th that would be a bet if you were to bet on that. It would be like an overnight bet, and you're going, and that's fundamental. It's, it's a little, it's it's harder now with NRBO to go over that for those that. that you know, in the future, when we go over this podcast again, an RBO was a reverse split uh, stock. I think a one for 30 reverse split. Um, it, people were buying it up yesterday. 90 million shares were bought yesterday ahead of the reverse split because of PIXY, one that ran, I think, like last week on a reverse split and went crazy. And then people were, are excited for the next one. They buy this one up, uh, NRBO, before the reverse split la today, and today it even shot up more. And the, the the float I think was less than a million. So we know this. We know we're 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 looking. Okay, so people are buying this because of PIXY. They're excited. They're buying ahead of time. The float is so like they, they're probably going to sell. So this is momentary buying. That you know that's going to be selling pressure. So even though the float is lower tomorrow, there's going to be all these people selling. So and there's going to be some new people buying. So you're, you're gauging that you're gauging the technical analysis. We understand the fundamentals as far as the reverse split and like there's no news or anything. So it's a man. If so, it's like how high can this go? So PIXY went from like 10 bucks to 44. And I'm like, OK, so that's that's our blueprint right there. Exactly. And and I, I, I mentioned today in the morning, I was like, OK, it's, it's probably 30 is the top. And of course, it goes to 60. <laughs> And I'm like, I think in the future, these low floats, we just, you know, multiply times two, whatever you think the top is, yeah. multiply times two. But um, but if you know it's going to go parabolic or, you know, you're, you're, you don't know, but like you think, okay, this is a low flow, low supply. Uh, the demand is still there, but there's going to be selling pressure at, at some point. You know, you got to position yourself accordingly as it goes higher. So I, I know some short sellers that, that went too big. They go one big block size. All right, at thirty bucks, you know, it's like that, that seems like a good number. Thirty bucks, it's like up a lot for no reason. You put a block size in, you're you're now you're getting squeezed. Um, you put a, a block order even at forty, you're getting squeezed. So the the trick is to understand this is a very low float, which is very dangerous to play in the first place. Personally, I hate under two million, but in this case, um. I traded so small, it didn't really even matter. And you know, and Lucas is a trade small as well. He's been able to grow his accounts uh, by trading small. It's just that it's just like such a good reminder of just stacking profit over like a repetitive strategy. And then like 
you grow, you hit a certain point, and then you move on to something else. You you always graduate to another level. It's like school, you know. So, but yeah. So the, the small the small way to trade. I didn't feel any pain while trading um, in RBO, and I, I was getting squeezed at a certain point. But my position was so small, it was all right. And I'm sure Lucas was around the same. We were chatting as we were trading it. And then it, it then it collapses and look at that it just fades all day you know it's crazy yeah so and, it, and that's exactly it like if you go small size on these low floats when you're of course they they are like a, a huge percentage up you're you're changing the odds of, uh, in your favor because you 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 you're not gonna you're, you're not gonna get emotional which is our main struggle when we are short sell as we are short sellers and we we know that it's gonna come back so. Uh, like it makes a lot of sense. Of course, you need to. You need to when you go to the trade. You need to. Okay, I'm gonna be there. Uh, and if it goes like I know 100 up again, I can add a little bit more. But I'm not gonna go like huge size because we don't know where where it's gonna end up going. And uh, it makes a lot of sense for me, man. And um, yeah. uh huh. You know, because like it's it's about behavioral finance kind of thing. So like. Cause like if you have if you're getting squeezed and on a low float, it's not just oh it's uh, let me survive the squeeze and it's done. No, like for me, like if I remember getting squeezed and you'd be like all all the low floats of the past start popping up in your head. You start thinking yeah. SPI. Oh my God, SPI went to like eighty or HKD went to twenty five hundred or you start thinking and like oh my God, what if this one goes to a hundred? Oh, it has a uh, I think it had EPs, exercise prices at like 97 if you adjust the reverse split. So your imagination starts going if on the low flow. You're like, oh my God, what if it goes to 200? I'm going to blow up my account. If I blow up my account, all my six months of work is gone. Exactly. You know, so you start thinking like this. So that's why position sizing is so important. If you go very small and like, okay, even if it goes 100% more, I can still add a tiny more and then the average will be all right. And that's just, and, uh, that's the way to go, you know, so. And that helps, like, that's one topic that I want to talk about, like my, my, my switch for, two, for, two, for full-time trading. When you're, when you're full-time trading, your FOMO increases. For me, uh, ex, like, in my case, increased. Because when you have, like, the whole day to trade and you know what you're doing, every, uh, every second could be a new chance to do another trade. So you, uh, I, I, that's actually, uh, that's, that's a question I do for you, man. Uh, how do you handle this FOMO during the whole period? Because I trade pre-market, I trade regular hours, I trade after market, after hours. And it's 16 hours of trading, man. Yeah. I mean, how, can, how can you yeah. manage, uh, how can you manage your time? Like, and when you're out of the desk and you know there's a market going on, how do you, how do, how do you relax and do not feel full? That's something that's new for me and maybe for other traders. And that's something that I'm going to ask you because can help me with that. Well, you know, for one thing, staying busy, like the podcast kind of forces me to not look at the market right now. Look, I'm, I'm talking to you. I, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> yeah. after hours. <laughs> that's one. It's like, keeps me busy with that. Um, But now when you're full-time trading, you know, the, you know, the past couple of years, the markets have been hot. So like if you have a good strategy and you have edge and, and you, you know, it's, 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 it's not so bad because there's always going to be something good to more or less, there's going to be a tradable play that you can make some money from. Um, however, on a day like today w without an RBO, I didn't really see anything out there. Um, so like, is it even worth it to trade? Probably not. And even NRBO was a low float. I, I would rather not trade it. If there was other trades, I would I would rather do those. I would have got out. I would have exited NRBO and done another trade uh, for a small loss or a small gain. Just, just because it's a low float. I, I'd rather not. Um, but uh, I'd rather just go big size uh, or like trade my usual size with another stock than tiny size NRBO because like this thing could go. Who knows? Uh, it could. What if it does go to 97 and hits the exercise price? Who knows? But um. Yeah. But but no, it's uh, how do I deal with it? You know, uh, the market has been good the past couple of years, so it hasn't it hasn't been a problem. But um, I you know back I remember back when I started uh 2017, 2018, 2019. Actually, 2019 I was like more watching the markets. 2018, 
28, 18, and 17, I was kind of fixing my life to trade. Every day I was thinking about trading, though. Um, it's just uh, at that time, the market wasn't hot, or at least from, from what I knew at the time. I don't think that, you know, the markets were slower. I remember like a, 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 vol a regular volume day was 10, 10 million volume on a stock or something like that it was a high volume day. Here's 100 million. So I don't know when when the market slowed down. I think it's the time to go. You know, just uh, go on vacation or something. But as the markets are still giving us plays for our strategies, because if you think about it, Lucas, um, well, what we trade, we're we're having good years. You know, I mean, it's it, it's sadly, you know, it's not the same. It's not can't say that for everybody. You know, there's a lot of traders that made a lot of money the past couple of years. That um, they're this is a this is a down period for them. You know. But they made a lot of money the past couple of years. So, like, uh, as long as we have edge, we we got to show up. And, you know, like, the pre that's why I show up to pre-market. I mean, not lately, not the past couple of weeks because I've been busy. But um, because I still have edge in the pre-market. You know, Sam shows up every day, I'm sure. You know, he has edge in the pre-market. He has to trade pre-market. He doesn't have edge yet in the regular hours. But if he has edge in the pre-market, he's got to show up to the pre-market. He's, he's got to grow the accounts, you know. So, um. It depends on whether you have edge or not. I mean, you know, FOMO, I mean, if you're if you're starting out, like for the people that you're that you're educating there in Brazil and all that, of course, you know, FOMO is something you can control. You shouldn't be trading. You you should be just getting screen time. Um, you know what I'm saying? Even if screen but like I, I don't think I mean, I don't think it's it's a I don't think it's an issue. Um, you know, the the only issue is like are, are you ha are you happy you know if you like trading you like trading like when when i know like when i was in puerto rico in trade space um people probably thought i was weird every single day for a whole year i would show up there at 3 30 in the morning and i would i wouldn't leave the office until after hours close <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of my life right now man i'm, you know? I'm trading 16 hours a day <laughs> I mean, you know, it's uh on, on the weekends I would go to the beach a little bit, walk around, like go to old San Juan and stuff, but like at the time I was I was grinding and I, honestly I was enjoying it. I was enjoying the process. So it's 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 if you enjoy it. If if you if you don't enjoy it, you can take you can take the morning off, you know, take right. the after hours off. You know, trade just to open, you know, collect your whatever you know, your profits are, you reach your profit target for the day, your quota. I know this is not something that new traders or anybody should do, but I have like, okay, if, if I'm feeling kind of tired or like, you know, and like I have edge, I show up, I make a little money. I'm like, all right, man, I think I'm done. Cause you don't want to, cause if you're too tired uh, after a certain point, then like you're going to lose your edge because now you're tired. And in fact, that's when my worst trades came in. Let's say like, and I remember, um, Last year I had PETZ, I shorted in the after hours because I was pushing it too hard. I was exhausted. I was on so low sleep and I can deal with low sleep, but I was low sleep for like a week straight. And then I see an offering play on this Chinese stock. And I'm assuming at the time, oh, offering is, is going to go down more. And of course it goes to, it goes blast do you remember off. If it, do you remember if it was in February, 2001, this trade? This trade was in November uh, 2001 PETZ. Um, yeah. It, they did an offering. It was like a sitting at like 80 cents. So first of all, this is how, you know, I'm, I'm this is why that you, after you got to know when to stop. Cause like I had no reason at all. This is not my pattern. Nothing. I was just exhausted. And I, I thought I, you know, I was, I was having a good couple of months until then. And I thought, you know, I have edge. I had, so you got to be really honest with yourself. This is like the thing with trading is all about self-awareness. And um, I was pushing it too hard. And I, I was so out of touch with reality from lack of sleep and just like pushing, pushing, pushing. I, lo I, I totally missed it. So like I was on low sleep. I was sleeping on the couch in trade space, uh, taking a nap for like an hour because I was in such low sleep. I woke up in time for the after hours. And then um, I see PETZ does an offering and I'm like, oh shit, offering. Let me, see, let me get a quick trade off. This is going to go like 10% lower at least. And then all of a sudden, I didn't understand fundamentals like I do now. It was a it was a pipe offering, private placement yeah. offering. So that it's a they're not going to dump their shares. So it's actually bullish. 
So, and it's Chinese. So who knows what the details were? So it goes, it, it, it drops like 20%. And, you know, of course, I didn't get out because I'm exhausted and whatever. And it just, it goes to a dollar, two dollars, three dollars in the after hours to nine dollars. And, uh, and yeah, I, I was just out of it. I was all, all over the place. But um, see, that that's when you need to be really honest with yourself. And, you know, trading is all about like being, you got to be really self-aware, you know. So are you, are you exhausted? All right don't trade right? uh, I, I think the main difference man it's that like i'm grinding my account because i want to i want to get like to a point to make a three uh thirty thousand month i'm i'm getting like hopefully this month i'm gonna get you a, a mark of ten thousand in a month like net profits uh and um like since i want to grind my account to get to another to another level i want to take all the opportunities that i have but I like 16 hours a day. It's not that healthy to be in the screen. Like you need to take some time off to relax. See, that's through. the, that's the, so it's the same kind of situation I had. I I, I wanted yeah, to reach my account. Actually, that was, this was November. I wanted to reach uh, a certain milestone by, by December. So I was like pushing it for that. Exactly. So, so that's when you need to be careful because um, if you push it too hard, it's not, it's not about pushing it too hard. It's about, you know, you're going to, you're, you're going to, become weaker in other areas when you push it too hard you might get lose focus on your health you might lose focus on your concentration on your rules on your process you know and and then uh you, you one little one mistake can set you back you know so yeah, you gotta be man. careful you gotta be careful but no um yeah, yeah. now i have another like point that i i i believe it adds to the formal and to the this overtraining i guess it's and, and I want to talk about it a little bit. It's about like how interactive bro interactive brokers works. Because man, since I don't need to locate the shares, I can do another types of trading that maybe you guys don't because you don't want to spend money locating the shares. I can do spread trading. I do a lot of spread trading. I like just leave the order at the desk if the spread is big. I leave the order there. I don't need to pay it. And sometimes I get hit in the offer and maybe like. In five minutes later, I'm going to put in, like, I'm going to be in the best bid and I'm going to make the trade. And these types of trading, like, since you're in the zone, since you're, like, at the screen, sometimes you get caught with these trades, which is good because I, I, like, I'm trading a lot of these types of trades. And this helps, but I'm over trading, you know what I mean? So when you're, and that's what, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, David, and that's one of the main things that I'm kind of scared of going to other brokers because like Cobra, Center Point, because even though I miss a lot of trades uh, due to not having shares in the inventory of interactive brokers, not having to locate the, the stock sometimes makes a difference. Right? I agree. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I went through the same exact thing, man. So like I had, I had interactive brokers for all the time I was trading the pre-market. I think you know this. Yeah. And like, uh, I was scared to move to a Cobra to move. I was like, yeah. man, because interactive brokers, sometimes it didn't have shares. So I couldn't short it. And I would see my friends getting squeezed. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't short it. So like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, uh, or like I would hear people talk about locates and like, it doesn't charge for locates, but, um, but I'll tell you what, you know, I, after a while, I think you still got a, a, there's no rush. There's definitely no rush. You got, you know, um, but like when you accumulate enough uh, profits from interactive brokers, you spread, price, right? yeah, yeah. Then you ease your way into another broker. Like you start with a small account on the other broker, you grow it while you still focus on interactive brokers. Cause that's, you feel good with it, you yeah. know? So, and that's what I did. That's exactly what I did. I, I made, Good money with with interactive brokers i started a, a cobra account with the minimum that they had like 30 grand or whatever at the time and uh i grew that one from there but like cobra was my second account i was still trading interactive brokers first account that was my main account um yeah. because yeah it's just but you ease your way you know it's like in the united states uh for example there was a store in in when i was growing up in miami uh called birdines you ever heard of this 
Burdines, no, no? no. So it was Burdines. It was it's basically Macy's, and then Macy's bought out Burdines. Then they called it Burdines Dash Macy's, and right. then after like five years later, it just became Macy's. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly like Interactive Brokers Cobra, and then like slowly, once you figure out Das Trader, once you figure out. You understand the locates. You start to see, okay, when it's easy to borrow a Cobra, it's probably going to squeeze and these little things and like to be careful for. Uh, and, we, and like there's a downside, of course, because sometimes I do the trade in, in interactive brokers and then like I finish the trade, I cover and then the stocks goes up, the stock goes up again and it's gone, the inventory. So I, yeah. I, I you, you do it a lot, right? You do it, you cover it and you reshort. Sometimes yeah. interactive brokers, I can't reshort. And that's yeah, the point. That that is so um yes, yeah, so, I mean eventually when when you when you you start a, a smaller account, you grow it and then it you gradually move. You don't just go, I don't think you should just go from interactive brokers, bam, get another one. Yeah. You gradually move and then you're you're gonna see the opportunities with the recycling the shares. Um because yeah, and I, using the rebates now, man. Right, man. Oh you're, yeah, you're that's right. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Cobra and some other they they do rebates on the on the routes. So it is a lot to take in. So it takes it takes a while, but you pick it up quick because you know whenever there's when you start to make money doing something, you pick it up. Your brain gets happy and you start picking it up. Really, you know. So I, and I, I, I think, and I have a question for you, like percentage wise of your trades, like. How many of the, the of the stocks that you you want to short, you don't have the chance, but you locate the shares. You know what I mean? Like you you locate yeah. the shares, but you don't have the the the, the right spot to short. Is it's it very, a lot or not? Very good question. No, I thought I thought it would be at first, but no. Uh, the only times I don't use it, like for example, if there's a halt, um, right. and I want to short it because I think it's going to go further and it's going to be a nice short. Uh, I will locate it while it's halted. And then it right. and then it hauls down. It doesn't go to it. Does it just dies? I, I just don't short it. But then, but that's a good strategy, you know. So I'll let the locates for that die off. But most right. of the time, this year at least, I've used all my locates. Yeah, I've used them all. I I get them right before and I I use them. Um, I think Reed does the same. I think Arsalan does the same. I think we all Original. do it the same. And um, and I've gotten so comfortable with it, you know. And like I started just like you with interactive brokers. I got so comfortable. You saw. You see me. I open up all these other accounts now because I, I love DOS Trader and I love recycling the shares. So, and uh, yeah, you see the other guys doing it too. So like, you know, it, it is, but like, um, I think interactive brokers, I think it's the best way to start. Uh, if you're doing pre-market, just like you did, because you're doing this, you basically is the same way that I was doing it. So I was doing interactive brokers pre-market. I grew the accounts and then I opened up Cobra and then I opened up a little by little, and then soon it just it goes. So, so with that, so you want to talk a little bit maybe about pre market? How's the pre market going? For the last four months, slow. So. <laughs> Three months, right? Like last last week, or maybe like on Monday this week, it was a really good uh, pre market. But like the last couple of months, they they're not that hot as they were before. Like I was talking with Michael Matthews in the in the chat room, and uh, he said the same. Like, thank God I was out because I was so, I was gonna be there for the whole day and like the, the whole pre market, and none of them it's gonna be like a lot of trades. So yeah, hopefully that comes back. Um, so what attracted you to pre market? Because you 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 did well in the pre market the past yeah, couple like, of years. And what what attracted me and using interactive brokers actually it's. At pre-market, sometimes you need to be really fast. And the, 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 the second you need to locate the shares and think, oh, is this cheap or not? Sometimes you lose the trade. And that's what helps me with interactive brokers. Sometimes I, I just like, it's going up. I just hit the bid and like, it's going down. And like, that's what attracts me uh, trading pre-market because a lot of the moves are, they, they don't sustain. Today was... I don't let me check here. Like some of the trade that I did today on pre-market. Uh, it was actually AK no a, APRE. It was a really good pre-market one. And uh 
Let me remember here. A A R E B. A R E B. That was a paid pump, also. Did you know that? I think yeah, I do. Right? You know, I was, I was yesterday was in a live yesterday and I was, I left an order <laughs> like in the after hours I was, I, I got viewed and I'm, oh man, why is this up like from 77 from to 90? And then I shorted yeah. a little bit more and like on pre-market you, 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 I love pre-market man. It's, it's one of the best times to trade and I'm, I'm still learning and enjoying the process on the regular hours. Like pre-market I'm, I'm, I can say like I, I'm consistent, I'm confident to trade like, but regular hours, like oh, what I'm doing right now actually to increase my, my profits and like my account, I'm going with more size on pre-market because of course I have a lot of experience and on regular hours, which I'm still kind of afraid to get squeezed. I'm still like trying to increase a little bit, but on pre-market, I'm going like almost full size in my trades. And that's the, that's the right way to go about it. You know, you have the experience, you have the, you, you know how, so pre-market is a whole separate strategy, you know? It's, yeah, it's like, for sure. Like it's, you know, so. it's not heavy. Like this week was the first uh, two steps, which is like we talked oh, about. Oh yeah, that's, so, so when you, what, but this week was the first one, but I think there was two, right? It was one, one or two, two. yeah. There was one or two, like for, for, for the last three months that I've seen, right? Yeah, and for those listening, yet we have we we have this pattern. This it's called a two step, where it goes up in the after hours, shoots up at four a.m. and then fades all morning, and then during the regular hours, sometimes they come back. But uh, but yeah, pre market we used to see a lot of those. Now, hopefully, that's a good sign because um, that means that, you know maybe there's some volatility. I don't know if, why those things happen, but like when when uh, I remember last year or the year before, there would be the Michael Matthews called them no flag pops. You know this one, Lucas? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we used to see a lot of those, man. And then like it just goes away. And it's a very simple thing. It's just a a very simple thing to spot. It's like at 4 a.m., it's just a gap up and then it just dies, you know? And that's the point. Like sometimes interaction brokers is good for it because you when it gaps up, the beat is there. And sometimes you need to the, the time you need to take to locate the shares and hit the beat. You don't have the time. So when I go there, I just hit it and it goes down. Like sometimes, yeah. sometimes. So of course, sometimes you, you have the chance to locate and short, but sometimes you don't. Sometimes I get a lot. Oh man, I just got, <laughs> I just got filled on curtain on my sub penny. It's 0 0.15 now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wh which one is that? Yeah, K-A-R-N right now. I just saw it. Oh man, that's nice. It's Wait, going 28% uh, up. I, I, I bought it. No, it, it wasn't today, but I was swinging it. I'm going to sell it right now. Sorry, man. <laughs> no, do you think? Yeah, man. Nice. What's the, what's the ticker on that? Q? E E R N. K or Q? K is Kevin. Oh, okay. K. 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 Sorry. K A R N. Sorry. K A I N. R as Robert. K as Kevin. Oh, uh, K. E K E R as Robert. Oh, that Kevin. one. Oh, that's the one that Reed got. Oh my God! It actually, yeah, man. I just that's I just, uh, the one that Ali plays in the in that. Uh, yeah, Shukani. <laughs> nice. Reed was. I just saw it in another screen right now. I I left. I that's what I do. I usually le uh, leave a uh, good cancel order, and sometimes I got hit, and that's yeah. it. So those listening, yeah. So K E R N, we talked about those uh, so asymmetric, pennies. asymmetric, yeah, very low price play. It started at like eleven cents today, and then like for some reason, uh, I forgot why. There's probably some fundamental reason why it's going, and now it's up to fifteen cents. That's just probably the one that's a pump, man. It's probably just <laughs> a pump, yeah. This is like the one that Ali uh, goes over in, in her guides and all that, but um, but yeah, Lucas, so. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, with interactive brokers in the pre-market. So when I started uh, trading pre-market, this is just 2020. Um, I, would, I, I was trying to trade pre-market because at 1 a.m. here in, in the West Coast, the market opens because that's 4 a.m. And uh, I would see back then all these stocks moving. And I was like, wait, it's, it's 1 a.m. These, these markets open. It's crazy. And so I was trying to find the broker that was open at 1 a.m. at 4, 4 a.m. Eastern. And uh, back then, Cobra... 
I think center point was open, but you need $30,000 for center point. I didn't have it back then. So interactive brokers back then was the only one that could actually trade that I knew of. Cause there was no wee bull back then. There was, you know, all Robin hood doesn't trade at 4. AM. Um, Cobra opened up at 4 30 AM back then. Oh. Like, can you imagine? So interactive brokers. Yes. Yeah, this is a, a few, couple years ago. So, you know, and even recently, like trade ideas I have for a scanner, they didn't open up at 4 a.m. So like 4 a.m. was was really uh, different not too long ago. So but interactive brokers has always been a broker that you can always short 4 a.m. So that's why I stuck with interactive brokers for so long. That's one of the main reasons, too. It's not just because of everything. It's because they were the only ones. But now we have more options. So, yeah. Nice, man. Really cool. Yeah. So so Lucas, so. All right, to start to wrap it up, um, yeah, anything? So what do you, what's your plans now for, for the whole Brazilian uh, education with the penny stocks and small cap stocks and these things? Yeah, man, uh, I think it's, I have a really huge chance to be the, the first one and the only one guy in Brazil talking about it. So even in a business way, see, like you have a podcast, you have a, uh, uh yeah and you're like you're killing it your podcast is for me the best one in the trading space like it's crazy man i, yeah, I, I, I i'm always anxious to see the next one and i i go for a run i listen it i i'm traveling i'm listening it's it's fantastic and i'm really glad yeah, to thanks be man here. yeah that's awesome yeah and um like what i'm gonna do it's like creating a community to like put people together to trade and teach them how to trade. Like, cause I wanna, I wanna try to help like changing people's lives as trading change in mine. And I am pretty sure that changing yours, like your story is fantastic. And I, I like every time I listen to it also, man, I really, I want, I wanna, that's one thing that I need to do. I need to see all your videos about the 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 your trip to Colombia and the F. Oh yeah, oh yeah, those are I fun. I need to yeah. see it, man. <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah. And th that's like Bobby Axelrod thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, paid, so um, Bobby Axelrod, I didn't see the episode, but someone yeah. told me about it. He paid a hundred thousand dollars to someone. Said, "Get dirt on this company." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's a, that's that's a premium thing, man. <laughs> and then you did it exactly the oh, way. Man. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah. I plan is like actually to create a a group of group of people in Brazil who trades it and like see, kind of like Chin Sykes does, which there's a lot of people who help each other. He's not the one who guys the guy. He's not the guy who's every day there like teaching them. They ha he has all the his DVDs, of course. But uh, I want to have like Brazilians to, to succeed in the, the, the trading space. And I've been trading in Brazil for 12 years and I didn't make it, man. It's hard to trade in Brazil. There's no volatility. There's no uh, volume. There's no liquidity, of course. And uh, there's no edge. And since there's an edge of there over, over, over US, why not bringing them there? And of course, there's a lot of another things, man. For example, I've, tr I've made all of my money, not all, but like most of it outside working hours. So there's a huge opportunity for people who still have and need a job. They can still make money in the pre-market and after hours and like do it as an extra income. So I really can help people over there, over here. And of course, there's another thing like the exchange from Brazil, real and US dollar is five. So like I'm making... Today I had like a 1K day. It was on, uh, you said it was a slow day for you. It was one of like my best days <laughs> over here. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, man, 1K it's almost the double of my rent. Mm -hmm. So can can you see it? Like if if yeah, yeah, yeah. if people here can make a hundred dollars a day, they are changing their lives. You know what? Like the Brazilian, it said. This is sad, but like the Brazilian uh, minimum wage, it's the minimum wage, right? The, the, the name. I, I don't know how much is it in the US, but the money, minimum wage in Brazil, it's like 1,500 reais, which if you divide 1,500 1, per five, it's $300, man. 
it's I don't I believe it's around like uh, I have a, I have a fa have family in US like uh, my uncle was here like until yesterday and he, he said I believe the minimum wage in US is maybe California where it's where he lives it's fifteen dollars an hour yeah so so in Brazil that's 300 well you said per a month, month man. Oh, a month you know like you work maybe three days in a, in a, in US and you have the same minimum wage in Brazil it's sad yeah so so trading you know you, you always need someone to show you how it can be done you know so yeah. hopefully people they 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 you know they they see the opportunity when you when you you know when you bring it up because i know man like it's like you said like trading has definitely changed my life man i was broke as you can imagine I, you know when i when i make more money i'll i'll tell more stories but you know it's it's pretty brutal but um and i'm pretty and i'm sure yeah I, i've seen you trade from only pre-market because you're working a regular job and then now going to full time because you're you've snowballed your accounts and able to do it you know it's it's, it's awesome um but yet and you know and like when if, if brazilians can realize the opportunity think about that man just you know just uh life -changing. completely life-changing so like yeah, hopefully I, I'm, I'm. Oh, I was gonna ask you also. So, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh and put all the pod, all the YouTube and podcasts in like Brazil in Portuguese also, so you can please, tell your please. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. So, I've already sent your your podcast for for some people, and like what I saw in the the sub the the subtitles is working fine. Like everybody can understand. So okay, good. Yeah, yeah because I put your last um episode i put it in portuguese i don't know if you noticed i did i did i, I saw it <laughs> yeah, I and it. Uh, no it was perfect that that was the one yeah. that i that i checked like is it all of them or just mine the last just one? yours I, because i i was testing it out and i'm like because it's a lot of episodes i gotta go i gotta on one of yeah. these, one <laughs> of these of <laughs> <laughs> on one of these slow days i'm gonna do it all just in, in like um, but like actually flowers. like i'm gonna advertise your podcast because it's the best in the market and it complements what i'm trying to teach because i'm teaching really basics like i'm teaching I th i'm teaching them what is a stock because when they trade futures it's different what, what when they are trading companies and I, i'm i'm in this type of level of teaching you know of course i'm i'm gonna teach them what is a pump and dump uh, i'm gonna teach them how to short not exactly the same strategies i'm gonna like maybe in the future i'm gonna teach something about like what is a gap up short? What is a, I don't know, yeah. like some types of strategy, but I'm really in the basic uh, way. And I'm, I'm providing them like one uh, long strategy, which is like, not sure if you know this strategy, it's like the ABC pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's a long strategy and, uh, and like short selling on resistances. That's what I'm teaching them. That's, that's what they're gonna trade. And I believe that's enough if they know about flow, if they know about like how to understand a, a news, a, a catalyst, they're gonna succeed. Like that, that's, I'm not teaching like, like the most uh, advanced strategies because they don't need to. They just only need to be profitable and they can be like better than trading futures. That's the main idea. Yeah, absolutely. Good opportunity there. Um, all right, Lucas. So. Thanks for coming on the podcast, man. It's been great. I'm going to have your information on the bottom of the notes. And uh, yeah, I'll put this in Portuguese as well. <laughs> it's going to be cool. Um, but yeah, man. Awesome. Thanks for taking the time. And always good catching up with you. And yeah, I'll see you in the morning. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, hopefully we can see each other like in person in, in the near oh, future. Oh, yes, right. Yeah, that's right. We, we, Maybe Puerto so, Rico. I don't know. I, I can go Puerto there. Puerto Rico. Um, yeah. In, in trade space, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll do something there.